you being in quantum now, of the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. My good friend of uh, Michael told me a lot about you. First question, what's your name? Where are you from? And what are you studying at MIT? My name is Hilal. I'm studying computer science and math, and I'm from Virginia. Junior. Junior? Okay, very nice. Theme of today's video is I'm interviewing MIT students who are either doing quant or doing a startup. As I told you, work, worked at Jane Street, so I'd argue that quant is probably the most lucrative career out of college. So walk me through like what could be like an expected salary range and like what's like the salary progression. Generally how quant compensation works and it's different for different firms, but you have your base salary, which is like posted on the website, posted like publicly, uh -huh. everyone can look at it. And then you'll have your bonus. Wait, can, can you just share it? it yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Jane Street, you can see this on the website. Yeah, yeah. Space salary, I believe is like 300,000. And then like the bonus is probably something like similar. Very person specific, yeah. depends on like your offers and whatnot. But I think like good firms, you can like expect in the range of like you know probably 400 to 700 thousand word of mouth obviously I, i'm not full time it's just what, what i've heard and obviously very lucrative but definitely takes a lot of work to get there definitely like a lot of competition yeah. you're in the space right so if you were to define quant in simple terms like how would you define it from my understanding of what quant is it's essentially developing complex algorithms to make the market more efficient. Is that? Yeah, right? that's, that's exactly it. what they oh, do. That, yeah, that's no, okay. that's it. You so, know, what does Jane Street focus on? So it's a market making firm, meaning that it basically makes markets efficient. It's in the most simple example, say you're trying to buy the S&P 500. And basically the way like buying assets work is that, you know, there's someone willing to bid a certain amount, someone willing to offer a certain amount and say like, the highest someone's willing to pay is $99 and the highest willing someone's willing to sell for is $101. Market makers will then like determine what the fair value is in between the 99 and 101 and then tighten that market, make more uh, liquid flow where people are willing to buy and sell around like a true fair value. Walk me through uh, like how many interviews you had to go through, like, you know, like just like the process of getting this job. Throughout that entire freshman summer, mm -hmm. when I decided I want to do quant, there's actually a book called The Green Book. It's called Quantitative Guide to Finance or whatever. Uh -huh. it's, it's a pretty well-known book. I like read through that, worked through that. Some cool websites like quantguide.io. Just talked to friends who had like interviewed and, and basically asked them like, yeah, you know, what can I expect? Um, what should I study? And it was basically just green book and like, you know, practice problems. Different firms have different processes, but you can expect probably like three to six interviews, mostly technical, some behavioral. What are some uh, notable questions they, they would ask you in an interview? I just like look at the green book and, and like, you know, it's like first question in the green book is about like some probability question about like coin flips. And oh, like, okay. you know, probably a pretty, pretty basic one, but like, you know, say you flip a coin uh -huh. a bunch of times, how yeah. many times can you expect to flip the coin until you see two heads in a row? I think that's, that's oh, probably shit. a pretty classic one. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. What's, what's the answer? It's six. Everyone says four. Or, um, okay. because it's like, you know, one half chance yeah, times yeah, two, yeah. but, uh -huh. but like, that's like sort of like the nuance in, in preparing anyone who does like any sort of like preparation and like studies, like the concepts behind it. Wait, so why is it six? Could you just explain why it's six? Do you like do like some, something called a Markov chain, keep track of like the states, like you have a state of one head and then you have a state of like no heads or like you see a tails or a start uh -huh. and then you have like your goal state. If you like solve out that system and just get everything and like the sort of expectation formula, solve it out, you get an answer of six, six. which is, it's very confusing even for me to think about oh, but wow, yeah. <laughs> it, it just it just works out like that okay. for a more personal question how would you sort of describe like your relationship with money growing up wants a you know very lucrative career it's a very desired career is that a big reason why you want to do quant or do you think it's like a skill-based thing like you think you're good at what it takes to be you know honestly it's a combination of both probably like 50 50 like i really enjoyed math i really enjoyed coding i really enjoy like statistics modeling probability playing poker that sort of thing and like there's no job that like really emphasizes all of those things like besides quantitative finance i think like that's kind of what drew me in but obviously like you know the the financial opportunity that you get from it i think growing up my mom always she's a very loving mother always supported me no matter what i do no matter how much money i make no matter like you know what's going on my dad too but i think like at the end of the day they're like you know it's good to be successful and money is a measure of success and like having a lot of money is just never a bad thing. So they didn't push you towards this? No, career. not at all, okay. actually. No, because because from my perspective, the idea of doing quant like never came into my head because like, I'm not that sharp with, you know, numbers and stuff. So, so I guess for you, it's more of a, you realize you're good at this and it just so happens to be a lucrative career. Honestly, actually, um, it's a pretty funny story. It was actually in high school when I first learned about like Jane Street and like Citadel and like HRT and all these like awesome quant firms. And it's uh, because of these math competitions I used to do. Like these uh, firms are recruiting early. Uh, At my high school, we're like, our math team was very big. Thomas Jefferson High School, um, Alexandria, Virginia, you know, very, very big math team. We attend tons of competitions and stuff. And so like, you'll see like Jane Street on some of my like high school shirts I'd get from like CMIMC, HMMT, uh -huh. even like the AMC, USMO, if you've heard of like that series. I think like being in 
that environment and around people who like you know like some of like the kids I would compete with or like oh. be on teams with would always talk about quant okay. since high school. I see. Okay. That's so like you, what you've yeah, been yeah. in that environment. Exactly. Okay. Rank the top three uh, quant firms. I think, like just the three really big firms that you'll like see a lot around MIT are like Jane Street, Citadel, mm -hmm. HRT. Okay. Some other like really cool ones are like Sig, Optiver, Jump, yeah. DRW. Mm -hmm. You like just like see these firms like everywhere like on our on our shirts mm -hmm. like just hanging around float like posters, job job postings and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So now getting like you being in quant is up to I feel like I feel like they're gonna weirdly want to know about that. Yeah, that's a great question actually. I guess yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, interesting question. Um I'm sure like there are people out there that look for like you know like oh this guy works at this firm and you know he makes a lot of money and you know I like him because he makes a lot of money and I think that's natural. But I think like one thing I've noticed about like quants in general is that they like really like aren't about that. Mm. A lot of them have like long-term girlfriends. Yeah. I myself had a girlfriend for like 2 years here. Once you realize like all this money and whatnot and like all these things like they're they're nice, but um, really like what matters in life is like the people you surround yourself yeah, in and absolutely. like the relationships you create. Mm -hmm. and I think like a lot of like quants do think pretty similar to like to me in terms okay. of that. At MIT, you know, what percentage of the population do you think that ends up doing quant? Probably lower than you'd expect. I think it's mostly the math and CS majors, some physics majors uh, actually. I think the quant they they don't recruit specifically like if you've done like statistics classes or or computer science. Like physics majors, like that's the sort of thinking, the sort of problem solving present in physics is also re just like really amazing for like the thinking that you need in quant, especially like the modeling and like that side of it. Maybe five to ten percent, if not lower. Like MIT's that's still pretty. Yeah. That's like a good amount, honestly. Yeah, I think MIT probably is like okay. has one of the highest quant populations yeah. out of like any college. But I think it's very very like person to person. I know people here that want to just work in like, you know, very high paying jobs yeah. for the sake of making bread and then like retiring early and living a good life. But at the same time, like there are just people who love what they do yeah. and like success is like a byproduct. I actually have a friend here, his name's Ethan Thornton. He isn't here anymore. He dropped out to like do a startup called Mock Industries. Okay. He was in this fraternity, um, uh -huh. played football with uh, with us back in the day, but yeah. now his company's worth like many hundreds of millions. And, oh, wow. but the guy himself just doesn't care about money. Like okay. the guy himself is just one of the most wholesome, hardworking dudes I know and he just loves what he does and wants wow. to like contribute to the world wow. and like you know you just get like so many different people that are like mm -hmm. just have such different views on money here okay but that's i say a, that's a very good perspective though. yeah what's, what's your friend's uh company what does he do it's called uh mock industries it's a def defense startup he's a defense startup defense startup yeah for the uh U.S. military? I'm actually not too sure of the specifics. Um, I definitely like, they have a website and everything. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely check them out. They're really oh. cool. But yeah, he doesn't really tell anyone like oh, okay. too much about it. Oh, it's, it's like a confidential thing. I don't even know. It's oh. just, <laughs> never happened to oh. never happened to like oh. stumble upon it. So it's worth hundreds of millions. Did it go like IPO? Like how, how where this money? Did he raise that money? I think he raised it. it like, oh, okay. every, all the details are just like available and like how okay. much he like. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, do yeah. some research. On yeah. very cool. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, that's it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, bro. Very, very, yeah. very nice meeting you.